weapons um Sorry, this is riveting, isn't it? Um, firearms versus general. Um, have I written here? Firearms might have been compared. Um, Firearms 33.3% in staging, but much more in the general crime comparison. It was 68%. So shooting is less likely um, if there's staging after the crime. Blunt force in staging is 14.9 versus 4% in the control. Um, the use of multiple weapons was... Um, 19.1% in staging, drowning was 2%, a fall or a beating was 0.7%, this is in the staging, sharp knives, 9.2% uh, in staging versus 12% in the control, strangulation, and that's Sharp knives, a sharp instrument or a knife. Strangulation was 14.2% in staging. And suffocating was very, very rare. 1.4% suffocating or poisoning. Suffocating and poisoning. So perhaps knocking someone out and then suffocating them um, strangulation isn't noticed that's why I've, okay so I've got strangulation 14.2 percent in the staging crimes so strangulation is different to suffocation okay so people talk of the um, hyoid bone and if you're strangled you're more likely to have that broken or well, you know if you hang yourself you can quite often snap that um, depending on how you are, though, if you tie the knot, knot wrong, you'll cut off the blood supply there, but you might not break your hy hyoid bone. But, yeah, asphyxiation is different to strangling. Asphyxiation is just, you know, that blocking of the airways. Perhaps as they're bruising under the mouth. Perhaps as they're cuts in the mouth, you know, rather than damage here in the throat. And they're different things. But it says that strangulation, um, they don't have the data on that. So maybe it's uncommon in crimes that aren't staged. Um, or, you know, the data, it just was missed. So red flags for staging in general. And she does go through the different types as well. But I just wrote down what she'd um, put in the general just to discuss now. Wow, this is 36 minutes. So red flags for staging in general. Multiple victims, multiple offenders. Firearms less likely. Accomplice after the fact included. Oh, multiple victims and multiple offenders, which includes accomplice after the fact. Firearms are less likely in staging. So, yeah, maybe Bridge Guy had a firearm, which we do think, because that would frighten the bejesus out of these girls. It would stop them running. Um, whereas you can feel like you might be able to run away from a knife, but a knife could have been used to murder these girls. Blunt force or strangulation. So if these two things appear when crime investigators get to the scene and there's multiple victims, or if later, soon after, they realise that possibly there are more, more than one offender, um, so if there's multiple victims and if it's blunt force or strangulation, they must consider staging is at play at somehow in that scene. And they must be very careful when they're collecting data and then analysing data. Um, the just the... the, the um, Justice BJS notes that domestic homicides usually involve 
firearms or knives and one offender and one victim. So, you know, you're less likely to find um, staging in those crimes. So, you know, it helps you direct how you look at the people around someone, right? Because if they're staging, it's more likely to be someone that's known, etc., etc., etc. Or why are they hiding it, right? Why are they re-diverting, trying to redirect any investigation? Sorry, this is repetitive and probably rambly, but, you know, I'm interested in it. Maybe someone is. Um, so, therefore, the presence of those characteristics should raise suspicions that staging may be present. So, multiple victims, blunt force or strangulation. Just as if it is suicide that is staged, the cause of death may actually be strangulation or blunt force trauma. So, you know, they might stage someone jumped off a, um, a height, you know, jumped out of a building balcony, for example, or hung themselves trying to cover strangulation as a hanging. The most common staging is staged burglaries. So that uh, staged burglaries, then suicide, then car accidents, non-vehicle accidents, self-defense, then homicides, then sexual homicides, and non-specific staging behaviors. Um, Yeah, different experts that she studied noted different beliefs about staging, and this was interesting. Um, it's interesting to see what the data shows, the data that Claire Ferguson revealed compared to the belief systems of people that had written up what is used as teaching material or just as, you know, for various things. Um You know, I've read an accidents often involve fire. Um, John Douglas speculated that drug or criminal enterprise crime would be the most common staged, right? Um, some thought drownings might be the most common staged. Others thought um, natural deaths and justifiable Viable homicide would be faked the most. The experts failed to list burglaries first, which is what the actual data shows. There are nearly three times more staged burglaries, maybe. Um, these are the easiest to recognise, you know. Um, I do need to clarify those law enforcement figures as well. I think that actually was in one of Turvey's studies and maybe it's not what Claire Ferguson ended up showing um, later on by the time she was doing this thesis because um, I know I've said the figure of 20%. It might be less than that. Um, just got to yeah, clarify it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very rare staging for in this sort of environment. Okay, so to be out there in the woods, even, even as a secondary dump site, right? So, I mean, it could happen because they could be the percentage that it's happened to, okay? But the odds are pretty low that it would be done in this way. Um, but sexual homicides are a type of staging, you know, um, this type of what we assume is some sort of sexual homicide. Uh, yeah, other crimes, uh, people attempt to cover them up by staging it as this type of sexual homicide, if that's indeed what has happened to Abby and Libby. Um, as time goes on, yeah, I don't think 
there are these you know spooky things where maybe pentagrams are left and i don't think that toys all of these things are just so traceable right you know a teddy bear and even if you think they're very generic and available everywhere right um i don't think items were left i think the only items left behind are these fibers and hairs possibly and that's it and i don't think there was anything spooky going on i just think some absolute coward an absolute despicable disgusting person has decided to take the lives of these lovely young women who had their whole entire life ahead I think out of bitterness, just hate, self-loathing, whatever it is, entitlement, just rage, anger, hate for the world, hate for the world that rejects them. I, I don't know, but that's what I think we're looking at here. Just some really violent-minded, nasty person or persons who's wanted to wipe out life it's like you know he, he's wanted to destroy that freshness and all that future he's wanted to wipe something off the face of the earth and he wanted it to be a human being um this is someone that is a real putrid outlier of society no matter how much masking maybe they can do in their life um, I think they really are an outcast. They don't truly fit in. They might try to put forward that type of facade. Um, you know, and you can consider this type of thing in relation to the clients, both of them. Maybe both are involved. Now, father and son, homicides like this, those are exceptionally rare it would be very rare. It's more likely if it was Tony with someone, it's not Keegan. And if it's Keegan with someone, it's not Tony. Uh, you know, I think Keegan has tried hard to, you know, create this alibi of being at Country Club. Is that the right word? Country Creek Road. Um, leaving devices and things like that there must be if it's him there must be another device that is unknown but surely by now there's been enough maybe subpoenas of all the telecommunications um businesses that provide service to that area where they can they just give all the numbers that were active in those that area they don't have to give data, they just have to give the numbers and where they were at a time in that area. This is how we are able to do things in Australia. Police don't need to get warrants just to get data like that. That data is available. They might need a warrant to then investigate that person's data, that individual's records like texts, phone, you know, who, where, what. But as far as seeing where a device was at a time. So if Keegan has done this, he wanted photos and images, those, if any of them had been found with Libby and Abby's image, uh, th there would be, this would be solved or, you know, so there's a device somewhere, if it's the clients, there's definitely a device somewhere that is unknown by police they haven't discovered it and they need to be able to do this and they should be able to get even if it's four thousand you know because you've got packers there there's a lot of devices there this is you know but any ones that crisscrossed anywhere near the monon high bridge area um they need to have access to what that number is so they can trace those people i hope that has been done um and, you know, this means that there's a phone that is missing or a device that is missing. No one knows about it, whose name it was in, who used, maybe it was never used for anything else. Um, but that, maybe it's in Vegas, where the clients went afterwards. Um, 
Because can you thoroughly wipe things? You know, the iPhone that Keegan, oh, I forgot about this one. Here you go, and he'd wiped information. There must be some way of realizing, oh, this is the device of interest. This was somewhere at a certain time or you know the data that is taken off it's just for the 12th 13th 14th 15th 16th you know i mean he did delete data from those dates anyone who's not looking at the clients is an absolute just a strange it's a strange thing to do is to not consider them and i think that's actually why you know people are trolling accounts like asm they made that account and they highlight all the things that people aren't looking at. You know, um, they make these short videos where they're pretending, you know, it's they've cloned an account. They just copied, you know, the picture and the name. Sometimes they make the name a little bit different. You can always tell who it is because you go on there and there's like six subscribers or something. Um, and... They're making short clippets and they're headlining them saying, Tony Klein is BG or killed, you know, is the murderer. Um, but, you know, they're highlighting what people are refusing to look at because it didn't fit their own, um, you know, sermonizing, their own narrative, right? That, that people act as if it doesn't even exist, that the clients don't even exist. Now, I just was going to talk about... Um, the contact between Kegan and Abby and Libby. There is something bizarre about that. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but look, Kegan is a pathological liar, right? You know, he may well have been the one contacting Libby or being contacted by Libby that day. He could what may well be the one that was going to meet up. But this could all just be planted by someone else just as shady as him to cast you know suspicion onto Keegan Klein away from them even his own father would do it maybe right um so I'm not clear enough on the um communications between Anthony Schott's account and Libby on the day he's been told you're the last one to have contact I mean that's not true is it unless something happened after that morning because Libby surely was contacting other people she contacted her father so her father is the last person that had contact with Libby on her phone it's weird how it's all worded right um but apparently Anthony Schatz and Libby German's accounts have connected on the morning of February the 13th We know Keegan Klein tries to meet up with people and the stranger put out a video. I might run out of time soon. I've got to go anyway. The stranger put out a video saying, you know, listen to what Keegan, um, Keegan's um, victim, really. You know, she had a lot of contact with Keegan over the years. He really manipulated and groomed her and abused her in many ways. And he at one point got her to go and meet him in a park for the first time to meet him in person and she took a friend and he was polite at the time then later started sending abuse to her you know I should have slit your throat etc right this is her testimony it might not be entirely true but she's quite believable um but it might not be true but isn't it an odd thing Keegan knows that the instant that someone actually meets him in person that, you know, the gyps up sort of thing. He's exposed as just being this, you know, putrid person and not being this Anthony Schott's persona, right? So what does he expect's going to happen? If he were to go meeting someone as Anthony Schott's, it's clearly nasty. And I don't think he'd be planning to just sex, uh, SA and then leave them alive right he the person that did this if they've catfished these girls and they've planned you know it's in their mind from the get-go that it's ending in their death imagine 
and it's pretty cocky you know it's pretty cocky to do it that way so you know some people are saying the catfish was catfished right you know um this was part of the planned staging to set someone up was to get Keegan Klein to go there because he's going to clearly be a really obvious suspect. People are going to believe that he could do it. But it all just gets so elaborate, doesn't it? Are crimes often this elaborate? And this real horrible person who killed his friend because he thought she had a lot of money that she'd found in her mother's house after her mother died. Um, he killed her, like suffocated her, and then threw her off a bridge. But in the course of trying to carry out this crime, he gets to the bridge, you know, he's telling the story to the cops, and, it, it, and he says, yeah, this is the thing about, you know, he's telling his friend, sorry, at this stage, he goes, yeah, this is the thing about committing murder, you know, um, yeah, things go wrong that you can't plan for. And... You know, he hadn't planned on not being able to lift a dead weight up over the railing. And so when his friend came, who he was just, he thought he was just going to go over and get in the car, his friend actually had to drive around and help him throw this poor girl's body over the side. And his name was Preston, the friend. I can't remember the killer's name. But, you know, they're just disgusting human beings. They're barely human. Um, you know, so... To have the balls and the guts to be planning this out and to think, yeah, I can get away with this because I've thought it out so well. Maybe it was the situation that gave them the, you know, this confidence, knowing that they were in an isolated area so that he could handle anything. I mean, this is someone that felt very confident and powerful. Did Kegan have that or did he get that because he had backup? Tony Klein would feel confident enough to, do, you know, that he's as cocky as all get go, right? He's got the confidence of, you know, he's got, he's super confident, super creepy, super, uh, um, but you know, to think that, so what went wrong? There must be something that went wrong, maybe, but we don't know what it is. Was it that the girls did cross the creek? Um, I mean, it's such a good spot there on the other side of the creek that you, you can't help but think, well, that had to be the destination. But did how they end up there was that, did you know, sorry, I'm just rattling away, aren't I? Um, <laughs> but maybe, you know, you guys can understand what I mean because you think about the same things, you know what I'm getting at. Um Yeah, why would law enforcement go through with the farce of actually just showing this if it's a mocked up image or video, you know, for the purposes of misleading? Why would they show this? Um, you know, because someone's supposed to recognize this person as an actor. It's so, so very strange. I mean, I've often thought it has a really strange quality to it, you know, the the lighting. It, you could nearly imagine that he's placed there on the bridge and then Abby's image was placed there on the bridge as well. I mean, Ab, but it's just so elaborate and so bizarre that, yeah, anyway, this is going to take hours to upload probably because it's 57 minutes long of um, just me not really adding, con contributing anything to this series of talks I was having, but um, just trying to, I know sometimes, you know, you need to go over and over things, right, just so that you can really understand it um, and get it, you know, so be thinking about what this would all mean if, you know, if, if you're going to believe when people say, no, they were killed earlier and then taken there, you've got to think, okay, well, what would that mean about the bodies? What would that mean about bodily fluids, liver mortis, rigor mortis, where the blood, where the bodily fluids are on their bodies and on their clothes? How, you know, um, how obvious that would be, right? And the investigation would be so different, you know. Okay, so what if the girls were 
you know, strangled lying down and left there for a while and then moved, well then it's going to be forensic evidence showing that. So sitting up is all wrong because the bruising's all down the back and it wouldn't be, it would be pulled down under the buttocks and thighs, for example, right? Um, just things like that, you know. Um, there'd probably be vomit, but maybe that might be not happen when a victim is standing up and we're supposed to believe that these victims were standing up or something. I don't know, but you, do you know what I'm saying? Just try and think it right through, all the way through. And you can take it as fact, I think, that as stated in the search warrant, there was a lot of blood. It didn't really look like a, a struggle. Um, but you're dealing, you know, th people grasp that onto that and they think, oh, that means that they weren't killed there. These girls would have been petrified, absolutely petrified. And they've got a gun at, aiming at them. There's probably just signs of them getting into that area and that's it. Anyway, I, I don't really know, but that's just what I tend to believe. See you later.